Good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. So this morning, <clears throat> for three reads, we're going to continue in Isaiah. So this morning, we're going to read Isaiah chapter 26, verses starting at verse 21 in chapter 26 of Isaiah to Isaiah 27, verse 9. Then we're going to go back to Genesis and read Genesis chapter 9, starting at verse 18, and end at Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Then we'll close out with Proverbs, starting in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 23, and read to Proverbs 13, verse 9. And that will be our morning reads, reflection, discussion. After I read in Isaiah, I'm going to give a, just a short, short background on what we're reading. So when I'm done reading, it'll make a little sense, but that's when we finish reading in Isaiah. Without further ado, let's jump into a really quick prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, shine the hearts of loving Master, with the pure life of divine knowledge, and open the eyes of your mind, that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn, so after having conquered and the desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. We are Christ our God, you are light, and to you we give glory. The Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Oh, how I love your laws, meditation all day, words of land to my feet, light to my path. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers of those who hear the word of God and do it. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit from the vine. You are true vine, and we are the branches. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. So starting in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 21. Now stop in Isaiah 27, verse 9. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. For... I'm going to start at verse 20. So it says, Come, my people, enter your closets and shut your door and hide yourself for a very short while until the anger of the Lord is past. For behold, the Lord is bringing wrath from his holy place upon the inhabitants of the earth. And the earth will uncover its blood and will not cover its slain. And that day God will bring his holy, great, and strong sword upon the fleeing dragon serpent. The first dragon serpent that flees, he shall destroy the dragon. And that day there shall be a beautiful vineyard and a desire to begin a hymn against the city. I'm a strong city, a besieged city. I water it in vain, for it shall be taken at night, and its wall shall fall by day. There is no woman who has not taken hold of it, who will appoint me to guard straw in a field. I rejected it because this enemy. For that very reason, therefore, the Lord God did all the things he ordered. I am burned down. Those who dwell in it will cry out. Let us make peace with him. Let us make peace. Those who come are the children of Jacob. Israel shall bud and put forth flowers, and the inhabitant earth shall be filled with its fruit. As he struck, shall he not be thus struck. As he slew, shall he not be thus struck struck as he slew shall he not be thus slain fighting and denouncing he shall send away did you not think with a harsh spirit about killing them in a spirit of anger therefore the lawless of Jacob will be removed and this is his blessing where I take away his sin when they make all the stones of the altars beat like fine dust their trees do not remain, and their idols will be cut down like a distant forest. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So a little bit of background, right? So in this time period, this mention was in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, and Oz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. This place, these places in this book took place around 745 to 680 BC. From approximately 25 years before the Assyrian captivity of the Northern Kingdom to about 40 years after it. So in Isaiah chapter 26, verses 20 and 21, 
We'll read those again. It says, Come, my people, enter your closets and shut your door and hide yourself from a very short while until the anger of the Lord is past. For behold, the Lord is bringing wrath from his holy place upon the inhabitants of the earth, and the earth will uncover its blood and will not and will not cover its slain. So Isaiah was a very powerful prophet of doom, right? He was known as prophet of doom. But as we're reading those words, not only was he a the prophet of doom, but he was also a great shepherd. Because let's read those words again. It said, Come, my people, enter your closets and shut your door. Hide yourself from a very short while till the danger of the Lord is past. For behold, the Lord is bringing wrath from his holy place upon his inhabitants of the earth, and the earth will uncover its blood and will not cover its slain. So the prophet of doom is being a good shepherd. To his people and he spent all night in prayer only to console them what with the words that were just spoken in those scriptures so isaiah chapter 27 in verse 1 it says in that day god will bring his holy great and strong sword upon the fleeing dragon serpent the first dragon serpent that flees he shall destroy the dragon so the sword mentioned is christ the incarnate god who will what? Slay the dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan. He who follows, he who follows, so he who follows the serpent shows that his life is crooked, uneven, and filled with contrariousness. But he who follows after the Lord makes his path straight and his footprints right. St. Basil the Great. Beautiful. Verse 6, Isaiah chapter 27 says, Those who come are the children of Jacob. Israel shall bud and put forth flowers, and the heaven and earth shall be filled with this fruit. So those who are left will bud, right? So the ones that were left will bud and what? Bear fruit. That's what it's saying. These are the true children. Jacob, right there in Scripture is what it's saying. Lastly, verse 9. That's why I give a little bit of background. So verse 9 says, Therefore the lawless... Losses of Jacob will be removed, and this is his blessing when I take away his sins, when they make all the stones of the altars beaten like fine dust. Their trees do not remain, and their idols shall be cut down like a distant forest. So right, so in verse 9, so King Hezekiah destroyed the idols in Jerusalem temporarily, but Christ will permanently destroy the idolatry of sin for all of mankind, right? So I give a little background. All right, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's move over to Genesis. So Genesis chapter 9, starting at verse 18, and it end in Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. It says, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Then Noah began to be a husband, and he planted a vineyard. So he drank of the wine and was drunk and naked in his house. Now Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Jephthah took a garment and laid it on both their shoulders and walking backwards they covered their father's nakedness since their faces were turned away they, they did not see his nakedness thus when noah became sober he knew what his younger sons had done to him he said curse be Can canaan a ser a servant of servants shall shall he be to his brothers he also said blessed be the lord god of shem and canaan shall be his servant may god enlarge Japha and let him dwell in the inhabitants of shem let Canaan be his servants as well. Now Noah lived 350 years after the flood. So all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. The genealogy of Noah will end right here in verse 1. Now this is the, gene now this is the genealogy of Noah. His sons, Shem, Ham, Japhat, and the sons were born to them after the flood. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in verse 26 in Genesis it says, He also said, Blessed be the Lord of God, the Lord God of Shem, 
and Canaan shall be his servant. So not only did the Lord bless Noah, let's go to Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, it says, Thus God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Increase, multiply, and fill the earth and have dominion over it. But Noah blessed, but Noah, so not only did the Lord God bless Noah, Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, but Noah blessed him, right? Many scriptures speak to this, for example, the psalmist said, For my foot stands in uprightness, and the children I will bless you, O Lord. Psalms 25, verse 12, can also be Psalms 26, verse 12, depending on your Bible. Noah blessed God because of Shem, and through whom Christ would come to save the world. How do we know that? Luke chapter 3, verse 36. Luke chapter 3. Oh, I'll read the right one this time. I think yesterday I read the wrong one. <laughs> so verse 36, Luke 3 says, The son of Canaan, the son of Abrax, and the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech. Proverbs chapter 12. Starting at verse 23. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll stop in Proverbs 13, verse 9. Nothing unrighteous will ever be pleasing to the righteous, but the ungodly will be filled with evil things. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but he who shows faithfulness is acceptable to him. A man of understanding is a throne of perception, but the heart of the undiscerning will meet with curses. The hand of the chosen shall prevail easily, but, but, the, but the deceitful shall be for captivity. A fearful word troubles the heart of a righteous man, but a good message makes him glad. A righteous and bitter shall be his own friend, but, but the decisions of the ungodly are unreasonable. Evil things shall pursue sinners. And the way of the ungodly will lead them astray. A deceitful man will not gain his prey, but a pure man is precious possession. In the ways of righteousness there is life, but the ways of remembering wrongs are unto death. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1. An astute son is an obedient to his father, but a disobedient son is for destruction. A good man eats from the fruits of righteousness, but the souls of lawless will destroy themselves before their time. He who guards his mouth keeps his soul, but he who is hasty with his lips, will dismay himself. Every idle man has desire, but the hands of the courageous are vigilant. A righteous man makes his unrighteous word, but a righteous man hates an unrighteous word, but the ungodly man is ashamed and will not have confidence. Righteousness guards the simple, but sin makes the ungodly worthless. There are those who are nothing who make themselves rich, and there are those who are very rich who humble though very rich, who humble themselves. The ransom of a man's soul is his own wealth, but the poor man does not withstand a threat. Light is with the righteous continually, but the night of the ungodly is extinguished. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at verse 25 in Proverbs chapter 12. It says, A man of understanding is a throne of perception, but the heart of the dis discerning will meet with curses. So understanding perception are two aspects of the crown of virtues. But undiscerning people bring what? Curses on themselves. That's what it's saying. So look at verse 31, chapter 12, Proverbs. It says, In the ways of righteous there is life, but the ways of remembering wrongs are unto death. Understanding and perception are what two aspects of the crown of virtues. Oh, verse 31. So I read verse 31, I'm sorry. In the ways of the righteous there is life, but the ways of remembering wrongs are unto death. So verse 31, the fruit of righteousness is life giving to others. For a righteous man does not remember wrongs done to him, but the ways of remembering wrongs are death, are death giving to others. For these ways destroy personal relationships. So, saying... Not to hold on, right? Not to hold on to grudges 
right? Sometimes that's hard for some people to do. For me, it's it's getting easier and easier, right? Because I've come to Christ. I don't hold on to things like I used to. But I use prayer, confession, and all that to get rid of it. Drop that rut sack. Drop your thousand pound rut sack. You don't need to be wearing that no more, right? All right, so Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1 An astute son is obedient to his father, but a disobedient son is for destruction. Astuteness is the crown of the wise. We read that the other day, Proverbs chapter. 14 verse 25 obedience is a fruit of this wisdom we talk about obedience all the time right but disobedience evidence of lack of such wisdom obedience is the right obedience is the right use of the will according to god and human nature but disobedience and the use of the will contrary to god and nature for human nature is good in itself how do we know that genesis chapter 1 verse 31 right god stamped right and wrong in our hearts as humans we know right and wrong it's stamped in our heart god stamped it so verse 31 says then god saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good so evening and morning were on the sixth day so verse 2 says a good man in proverbs 13 says a good man eats from the fruits of righteousness but the soul of the lawless will destroy themselves before their time a man's soul is good by nature and the fruits of righteousness manifest themselves naturally from the soul. But lawless is willful and prevents, and prevents these natural fruits from showing themselves. Unless this man corrects himself, he will destroy his own good nature. Right? So, we're good. Right? We're good, but what? We choose to be bad. Does that make sense? I think we're good by nature, but by choice we do evil things. Right? Because we fall short. What is born of the flesh is a flesh, but what's born of the spirit is a spirit, right? Jesus says we must be bo born of both water and the spirit, right? I'll read that. I might close out with that. So verse 3, say, He who guards his mouth keeps his own soul, but he who is hastily with his lips will dismay himself. He who guards or disciplines his own mouth allows the natural virtues the soul to manifest themselves but lack of discipline dismays the soul because these virtues are frustrated verse 4 says every idle man has desire but the hands of the courageous are are digitally. courage is one of the great is one of the general virtues of wisdom courage keeps a man from being idle and his desire from the natural virtues to show themselves so being idle in his Desire for the natural virtues to show themselves. So verse 8 says, The ransom of man's soul is his own wealth, but the poor man does not withstand a threat. The wealth of the soul is the virtues of which wisdom endows it. As these virtues manifest themselves through wisdom, they ransom the soul. But this poor man is one who by his vices prevents his virtues from showing themselves. Thus he cannot withstand the threat of these vices. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's recap. So we're reading the godly and the ungodly, right? Here in Proverbs. Reading back in Genesis, Noah, blessed by God, and Noah also blesses God. They have a relationship. Isaiah, the good old prophet of doom. Right? But the good shepherd, right? So the new birth entering the kingdom, right? So Jesus was having a talk with Nicodemus. I wanted to close out with this because it came to mind. And so let's start reading here in John 3. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher and come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born 
when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water, right there, and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who was born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Beautiful, right? The birth of water and the Spirit is a direct reference of Christian baptism, the gift of the Holy Spirit given, what, at chrismation. So Jesus is speaking of the Spirit, right? But separate, right? The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? And th that right there is one of the beautiful things. When you read that, it's talking about the Trinity. It's talking about how he's in one essence with the Father as well, right? beautiful it's beautiful it's truly beautiful to truly be born again right it's beautiful to follow him and his will right and not our own it's beautiful to teach his words and do his will and not our own and that's where i'm going to stop this morning in the, name of the father son and the holy spirit Depart peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O Lord God, you spoke to us your divine saving words. You illuminate soul sinners, comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hearers, spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life and conduct without reproaching Christ our Lord, to you we get glory. The Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Oh, how lovely lost meditation all day, worth the land to my feet, light to my path. For his writ, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God again, again. My mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Our Father, who art in heaven, how that be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever in this ages. I mean, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. Jared Wesley Campbell. Good evening, good morning, good day, good afternoon. However and whenever, however this message gets to you, right? Stay on the path, right? Seek. Christ. Get on the right path. Things are getting interesting in the world, my brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please share out my videos on YouTube. My ministry is looking for the lost sheep. I want to help those who want to heal. Help those who want to truly learn God's word. Please share me out. I love you all.